How many of you have ever helped your child complete a project for the science fair? <laughs> I love seeing all the hands. Perhaps your child came home very excited and had already picked out their project. A perfectly good experiment studying the part effect of particle size on reaction rate. <laughs> and while individually all those words make sense to you, to someone who doesn't have a solid science background, it might look a little more like this. <laughs> there was a very scientific study done not too terribly long ago, and the results were posted on Reddit. <laughs> it studied the effects of the science fair and the turmoil it causes in families. And what the researchers found was that as the date of the science fair approaches, parents will yell more and their children will cry more. And this will increase at an exponential rate. And their conclusion was that everyone hates the science fair. <laughs> My personal favorite piece on this board is in the lower left-hand corner where it says, half-baked idea of dubious merit. Because for anyone who's helped their child complete a project for the science fair, that's probably exactly how it felt. I moved to Austin in January of 2011. And shortly after moving here, I started volunteering to judge the local science fairs. And I loved to talk with the kids, hear what they had done for their projects. And most of them were really good at telling me how they came up with their idea, what they did, and what they saw happen. But when I asked them to tie the scientific concept that was behind their experiment to the results, when I asked them to demonstrate an understanding of what had happened and why it had happened, I got a deer in headlights response from many of them. Some of the experiments I saw didn't even really follow the scientific method. They lacked variables, and they had poor experimental design. Think your demonstration experiment, the volcano or the tornado in a bottle. And I began to realize that we had students in our community who did not have the help they needed to be able to participate in the science fair. I got to participate in the science fair when I was in eighth grade. I studied the effect of music on plant growth. And I was lucky that I had a mom who had a science background and could help me when I got stuck. And I wanted to find a way to help these kids so that they could take away a similar experience from their science fair that I did from mine. But I wasn't really sure how to begin. So I did what any good scientist would, and I applied the scientific method to this problem. Now, most people cringe when they hear the scientific method. But really, it's just a very structured form of problem solving. And I had already done the first step. I had made an observation. There were students in our community who needed help participating in the science fair. So I asked a question. What could we do to help them? Not only that, if there were students who were reproducing a project but not able to understand the science behind it, were there students that weren't even getting that far? not even getting started on a project. And if that's the case, what barriers would prevent them from participating in the science fair? So now I needed to do some background research and figure out what was going on. So I started talking to people. I talked to some educators, friends, did some reading, and I found three major areas that hold, prevent students from participating in the science fair. The first is parental education. Sometimes parents just don't have a solid understanding of the scientific method. Some parents barely finished high school, or even the ones who did finish college might not have gotten a degree in a science area. And if they don't feel confident, it's gonna be really hard to help their, they're gonna have a really hard time helping their children participate in the science fair. The second one is finances. We have families in our community that are struggling to make ends meet. And if you're barely able to put food on the table, or keep a roof over your family's head, the 20, 30, 40 dollars that it would take to buy supplies for your child to do an experiment could be a serious hardship. And finally, time. We have families with parents who both work two and three jobs. And if you're working that many jobs, it's possible that you're working 10 and 12 hours a day, five, six, seven days a week. And it's really hard to find time to sit down with your child and help them with their experiment. So after gathering this information, I formed a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is just an educated guess as to what you think is going on and what you might be able to do about it. And so I formed two. 
If students are provided with adequate assistance, then they will have equal opportunity to participate in the science fair. And the second one, if students have support, then they will be able to explain the science behind their experiment. Now came the difficult step, coming up with an experimental procedure. I had a vision in my head of a program where volunteers from the community worked one-on-one -on -one with students to help guide them through the process of completing an experiment. But I wasn't really sure how to make this vision a reality, and I wasn't even sure if it was really the best option for the problem. So I did the only thing I knew how to do, and I started talking to people. I talked to anybody who would stand still long enough to hear my idea. And I talked with colleagues and friends and administrators at the community college that I teach at. And suddenly, a kickoff activity came into uh, formation where the third and fourth grade students from the participating schools would come to the college and do an activity with the faculty to introduce them to the scientific method. I talked with other friends and people who belonged in community organizations that I was also a part of, and I found people who were willing to join me in a committee to help lead this project. They put me in touch with other people in, part, in other organizations, and suddenly the funding to help buy supplies for all of the students materialized. And from all of these conversations, the Science Fair Mentoring Project was formed. And last year, it served two of the elementary schools in Austin. As we ended the end of our experimental procedure, we started to gather information and look at what we had done. And the first thing we found was that not all of the students were able to explain the science behind their project, which was really disappointing at first until I realized I have college students in my classes who can't explain the science behind their experiment. But you have to start somewhere. And we had started these, these children on the path to understanding. And some of them did get it, but some of them just weren't there yet. But we also found that there were a lot of things going on that we had never anticipated. We found a group of students who were hungry to explore the world around them and develop positive relationships with adults in the community. One student bonded so well with his mentor that he asked to be paired with her again this year. They improved their communication skills. They were very proud of the experiments they had done and they built self-confidence in the process. And overall, their experiments were better. They followed the scientific method and they had better experimental procedures. In 2014, before this project was offered in Austin, there were 10 students from Sumner Elementary School that participated in the science fair and 20 from Nevlin. As a result of this project in 2015, 52 students from Sumner and 60 from Nevlin participated in the science fair. Of those 112 students, 102 participated in this project. So obviously, if you support the children and give them the help they need, more will participate in the science fair. But the report that I am happy to share with you today is much more than numbers. Because we discovered something that we hadn't considered. That an idea can be powerful. That it can organize a community and it can touch the lives of countless individuals. And I'd like to leave you with one of those stories because it all comes down to Alice. Alice was a third grader at one of the schools we worked at. And her mother shared this story with me after the science fair was over. They had older children that they had helped complete experiments in previous years. But she and her husband always felt like they didn't quite know everything they needed to to help their children. So when this project came available, Alice signed up. The students are not allowed to take their projects home until after the science fair. So there really wasn't anything that she took home to show her parents. She talked some about her project, but not a lot, until the day of the science fair, when her mom showed up to see what Alice had done. She said Alex, Alice was excited and animated and could tell her mom all about her project. But for Alice, what she had gained during this project didn't end with the science fair. Because that night, Alice went home and started another experiment. 
She had seen an idea at the science fair that she wanted to try herself. And so she pulled out the supplies she needed and started setting up her experiment. She even found an old trifold board left over from one of her sisters and started writing out her hypothesis and develop, developing her experimental procedure. This is the kind of engagement that students are walking away from this project with. This is the power of a hypothesis. The power of inspiring another to do something that they had never done before. This was my hypothesis and my idea. What's yours? Thank you. Thank you very much.